strengthening mental health needs to start young, given the current mental health crisis among young people here in the United States. And that is where MESH comes in. Now, it stands for Mental, Emotional, and Social Health, MESH. And it's a new method that seeks to foster resilience through playing. And that means creating toys meant to strengthen the skills that kids need for their mental and emotional and social health. According to research, there are eight crucial mess, mess, mesh skills that will help children develop resilience. They include problem solving, adaptation, self-regulation, self-advocacy, and communication strategies. And toy marketers have been embracing these types of toys, although it's still pretty early uh, in the phase of all of this. For more on Mesh, let's bring in one of its executive board members, Jamie Gallagher. Uh, Jamie, thanks so much for taking your time. I want to get right to it. Can you explain a little more in detail what a Mesh toy is? Sure. Thanks for having uh, me and giving us a chance to talk about this, uh, Sean. A, a Mesh toy, the way we look at it, uh, really drives the building of resilience skills. And you mentioned some of the uh, some of the key skills that we believe build resilience. So when we look at a toy that is a mesh toy, we really look for a representation of those eight skills, the ones that you mentioned and bear repeating, like problem solving and perseverance, adaptation, conflict resolution, uh, self-regulation, self-advocacy, uh, cognition, and communication. So what we're really looking for is the presence of these skills in play that we know, based upon research, mm -hmm. will help build resilience. So when kids get out on the kindergarten, perhaps uh, by working and solving some problems with these toys, they're going to be better able to handle themselves if they're feeling pressured or stressed or bullied or something like that. that that's exactly right, because there's also a, a whole other component of this, which is you know kind of after the fact, once the kids are already feeling that anxiety, you know, our approach to it is really on the front end. It's really looking to provide those skills to help them cope over a lifetime uh, with those types of issues. Okay, talk to us about some of the toys and how you believe they can help. Because, uh, look, you know, I raised three kids, and these kids want video games. You know, they want uh, baseballs and things like that. So how do you convince a child to play with a mesh toy? Because no kid wants to say, you're going to learn something if you play with this. That seems like a way to instantly turn them off. Yeah, and Sean, that's the beauty of this, because what we have done, in addition to those eight skills that we had mentioned earlier, we also have been able to identify what we call four play patterns or four types of play that will lead to those the development of those eight skills. So for instance, when we talk about these four types of play or four play patterns, as mm. we like to call them, it encompasses storytelling, uh, games that might have increasing challenge as you play them, uh, anything that, provide, that pre presents an obstacle that has to be overcome. And also what's really important is types of play that facilitates adults and children connecting and playing together. So if you, if you listen to those four types of play patterns, you can understand that there's a wide variety of absolutely wonderful toys in the market today that deliver on those play patterns. Yeah, I, I think that you could find every study really shows that if parents take an interest in playing, reading with their children, that that child is going to be uh, better balanced moving forward. So how has interest in sales in the so-called mesh toys evolved in recent years? Well, keep in mind, as we had mentioned earlier, the, the idea of mesh itself, of mental, emotional, and social health uh, through play and through toys, is relatively new. Uh, what we do know is that during the last five, six years, there's an increasing awareness uh, of the importance of mental health and also the, the challenges that children face. So we, we've got a, a, a lot of interest mm -hmm. right now in this, and that's giving us the impetus and the excitement to move ahead with this MESH initiative uh, and to begin to put this into play, which we'll be doing uh, basically right now. Yeah, we're still coming out of the pandemic, and, and certainly that was difficult on children of all ages. So what role do you think COVID played in their ongoing development, and how can MESH help that or help kids deal with the stress that came from that? Yeah, and, and what we believe is that although the pandemic accentuated and accelerated 
this challenge in terms of children's mental health, uh, we were moving in this direction. You know, there was a steady rise in children's mental health concerns almost since 2010. So it really isn't something that, that just emerged uh, during the pandemic. It was, it was moving in that direction prior to that. What it did do was raise the awareness mm -hmm. and also increase the engagement uh, and also us knowing that we really do need to take action, whether it's companies like ourselves, communities, certainly parents, as you had mentioned, you know, it really is time for us to take action. You know, Jamie, criticism comes with the territory. Uh, I'm sure that you've had to address concerns that this group of toys is being overhyped. How do you deal with that? Well, one thing that we know is that within the toy industry, we live with and we probably can recognize hype almost better than anybody. I mean, we know that that's part of the territory, as you mentioned. I mean, these many times toys are sold because it's a trend. It's a hot entertainment property. We know what hype looks like, and we feel really comfortable that this is very different. Yeah. This is really an initiative. This is a movement. Uh, we are in the business of fun. And right now, this is a very serious issue. Yeah. So as much as we're happy to be in the fun business, we're also very, very happy and honored to be in a position where we have the tools to take action. Yeah, I think somebody a long time ago one time told me uh, you have to distinguish between you know, a trend and a movement that you're talking about and a fad. So I think you're right on point there. Okay, Jamie, thank you so much for your insight.